Oh, good morning. Welcome to my messy garage here. Today we're going to do get into the battery of this Himalaya bike because I'm kind of diagnosing this thing as I go. And uh, yesterday I found out this controller is shorted to ground. So there's some MOSFET transistors in there, about uh, 12 of them, I believe. And one or more have uh, shorted to ground, which caused the battery to go out and the display is not working because there's no battery. So that kind of makes sense. So what we're going to do is take the battery apart this morning and uh, get down to the fuse that we can find in there and uh, replace it. So enjoy the video. I'll have some coffee first. Okay, now here's my uh, workbench. I'm getting it prepared here to work on that battery. And this is some of the tools I'm anticipating needing. I probably won't use half of them, but I got them handy here. You're going to need a screwdriver to get into the battery and you know side cutters maybe need some needle nose cut pliers some smaller side cutters uh maybe a razor blade knife and uh i kind of use these little pliers for a heat sink you can also use like a little clamp or something and a soldering iron doesn't have to be a fancy one i don't believe if it's soldered in there and then a multimeter so a multimeter that'll read dc voltages over 60 volts and you know ohms for continuity so that's basically the tool set up and uh, we'll get started here shortly and I'm going to do a little test on the battery here just to prove that it's dead and then uh, we can show another one uh, at one point where you can measure the voltage. Okay here we got two batteries. One of my batteries is my original bike and then I bought this other battery so I thought we'd uh, swap it out but this one here is uh, apparently dead so we're going to test out the uh, voltage on both of these so as you can see that's pin six and what is that four and then uh, so there's nothing there nothing there all dead all dead on all pins across now we'll go to the the good one here okay we got 54.5 volts there and 54.5 volts there and the bottom pins have zero so i don't know if that's correct or not but so that's the situation here on these two batteries so one's apparently dead and the other one's okay so just to let you know okay here we are with the battery that's uh bad in the hemiway and we're suspecting that it's got some fuses out maybe one fuse there might be a couple in there but we're going to tear it apart and see if what we can find in there so first there's uh looks like there's about five phillip head screws in there so that's what we're going to first do is uh get those screws out and see if we can separate the case okay so we're going to loosen these screws and then that'll that'll get us to uh, the area where we're going to separate the case there okay we got the screws out now we're going to separate the case so it should come apart pretty easy so i'm going to pull out this and in the back, looks like it's, oh, it came out pretty easy there. Now, if you look down here, we got this little uh, switch down here. So we probably don't need to take that out, but I think I'm going to take that out because I don't want to pull on it. Let me see. Maybe we might not have to. If we flip this over, because I'm believing the fuses, there is a fuse there, and you can see the fuse here. So this is one fuse, kind of an automotive fuse. Now, the other fuse... I'm thinking it might be down here, so we'll look at that. So I don't think you need to take that board off, but just be careful not to, uh, you know, pull on those little wires there. Okay, this fuse down here looks to be a 10 amp uh, automotive type spade fuse. So I don't think, I think that's the BMS one. So, and looking at it, you can see through there, it's not blown if you can see down through there. So that fuse is okay. So I suspect the other main fuse is probably on the other end. We'll check that out. So we can put that tape back on that one and just leave that one alone. So we're going to go down on this end next. So we'll, we'll pull this open and see what we can find. Okay, so we're going to look at this one. Looks like we got to take this piece of tape off temporarily. So we'll pull that off. Now this looks like... This is a connector here that looks like the size of the wires tells you one thing. This is the main amperage from the battery here. So, And I'm suspecting the fuse is probably in this little uh, sleeve here that's covered up. So what we're going to do next is slice that open and then see if the fuse is inside here. And I believe it will be, but 
That'll be our next step. Okay, here's where we suspect the uh, the fuse is in here. So I'm gonna have to cut this open and uh, see if there's a fuse in here. This is where I believe it is. So we'll just kind of slice that carefully. This razor blade knife. And we'll peel that back and voila, there's the fuse. Now let's look and see what size that is. Be careful of tending that. So that is a um, 30 amp fuse, surface mount fuse. So let's do the uh, ohms on that. Just we'll get the ohm meter here. Now the ohm meter's on on continuity. You can hear it here. So we're going to check this fuse out. So you get on both sides of the fuse, and see if we got continuity through it here. So there's nothing. That shows a complete open circuit. So that means that fuse. You can even test the fuse itself, but that's completely open. So that fuse is blown, even though it's not. You can't see it. It's like a glass fuse, but it's blown. So. So our next stop is to get a different type of fuse and parallel it onto this one so it will work. These little fuses here are real hard to get, these little surface mount ones. Uh, I didn't say impossible, but they are hard to find online. Okay. Okay, so these these are the fuses we're going to use. Uh, they're, they're common uh, automobile fuses you can find in any auto parts like AutoZone or whatever. And we're going to try to parallel this fuse here, but but as you see, it's a little bit uh, narrow there to hit both of those solder points on this board. So we're going to kind of spread it out real carefully, not to break the fuse, where we can make that contact and maybe even uh, tin the fuse itself so it will uh, bond real quick. So you don't want to put a whole lot of heat in these fuse, and also a heat sink such as one of these would be pretty good or you can do it with a little pair of pliers or something to kind of suck some of the heat away from the fuse because if you get it too hot the fuse will actually melt inside there so so that's our next step okay i got the one arm or leg of the fuse in the vise here so it, so it won't move and i'm going to slightly bend this leg up and we're going to give it a little bit of a bend not too much and then we'll switch it around and give the other side, oops, let me do. Okay, so here's the fuse on the left, which is the original fruit fuse. And the one on the right, the one we spread open a little bit. It's, it's probably less than an eighth of an inch as a spread there, so. Okay, here's the fuse that's, you know, pre-bent, spread out there. So we're gonna sandpaper it down a little bit just to get it nice and shiny to accept the uh, solder. So we have a real good connection. And then we'll take a little bit of alcohol here and clean that off. We don't want any sanding grit on there. So now that's all clean, ready to go for soldering. That'll be our next step. Okay, so here we got the the fuse and a holder here. Now these these little alligator clips serve a dual purpose. One thing it holds it still for you, but it also acts as a heat sink. Any kind of transistor or a fuse that's heat sink uh, heat sensitive, you want to. Uh, you know suck the heat away which that's what they call it a heat sink so then we'll go ahead and tin these get my solder flowing here so we'll put a little bit of solder on there this is just kind of prepping it up here a little bit get the flow yeah there we go I see the little blob of silver on there, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so now that we got the uh, the legs of this fuse soldered here, we're going to double check and make sure we got continuity through it and that the heat hasn't affected the internal link in the fuse there. So just to double check here real quick before we put it on there. Yep, so we're good there. So we know we got continuity. So now on to the soldering here. So basically what we're going to do here, I'll just hold this up here, is we're just going to bridge between these two solder connections on the side here. So that's just parallel in that fuse, the old fuse, which will put this in line. So that's what our next step will be. Okay, so we're gonna solder the first leg here. Now, if you don't have a soldering uh, gun or you don't know how to solder, you might find somebody that could solder it for you in a helping hand, like this is called a helping hand, or you can hold it with a little pair of pliers or something like that. So, and we'll see if we can get it to flow here. Get it nice and hot. There we go. A nice flow there. Okay. Okay, we'll get the other side soldered here. Nice flow onto that big solder pad there. So there we are. We got both sides soldered on there. And we'll do another check 
again with the continuity meter here just to make sure that that's it got continuity now and it does so i think we're good so now we're gonna we're gonna insulate this and uh put it back together basically so we'll show the insulation process here okay we're gonna reuse this little uh, fiberglass tape here as much as we can it won't wrap obviously all the way around this fuse so what we're gonna do is use this uh, stretchable insulation tape it's electrical tape but it's kind of a stretchy type that stretches and it kind of works much like a heat shrink but you stretch it so we will start stretching that around there now okay so now we have the insulating tape on there so we're gonna put just one more layer of regular uh, tape on there as you see we left the fuse out so you'll be able to see it and uh, okay so now we have it the double wrapped on tape there and then this is shown with the, the fuse out so you can see the size of 30 amp of course but you can also test it right here because of the two points here on these fuses automotive fuses so you'll be able to test it in the future if something else happened there so so i think we're ready to go back with it and put it back in the case okay so now that we have the new fuse before we put the case back together we're going to test it back here so you should have full voltage here so we'll test it on these two and it looks like we have 54.5 or 50.4 which is correct next set crossed 54 volts and then these two back here never did have any voltage so that's correct so i think they're just like lineup pins there on those or something so or they could have been a signal pin but that's correct so that's correct as compared to a new battery again so we're ready to put it back together okay so we got the fuse kind of uh, poking down in this hole on the left here of this case so and then it's kind of folded in there like that because you have to have access it's tight but it'll go you have to have access to these two holes for the battery case that are right here so so now we'll work the case back on there and then we'll do another double check on the battery make sure we didn't mess anything up okay so now we're all back together we're just going to do a double check and make sure we got voltage here so on the bottom one here we got 54 0.5 perfect and 54.5 and these two top ones have zero so that's correct so that battery is ready to go like a new one so i hope you like the video and uh, get some information out of it take her easy bye